Good afternoon, my name is Alberto Rujan with Performance Equine Veterinary Services and Equine Performance Innovative Center in Ocala, Florida. Thank you very much for having me here talking to you today. I will be speaking about hyperbaric oxygen chamber helping us out with difficult cases. I hope you enjoy this presentation. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to present cases, follow up with history, treatment, and then I'm going to present you some research on the rationale of the presentation and the rationale of the case. The first case I'm going to present to you is Willow. Willow is a thoroughbred mare, four years old, used for show, who presented to the center with a complaint of five out of five lame on the right front. She presented because some time ago she lost a shoe and she came out acutely lame. The veterinarian quickly attended the mare with antibiotics and soaking the foot. And even with that, she was not responding to treatment. So referred to a clinic nearby where she was continued to be five out of five lame. And an MRI showed that the navicular bursa has been damaged. So this is a clinical presentation. And initially she was treated with systemic antibiotic, regional limb perfusion, Bursoscopy, which means that they went with the with the scope, clean up the joint. And after that, she continued to be right out of five lame, unfortunately. Then after that, she went in the same clinic for a second procedure where they performed what we call a street nail procedure or a bursotomy. She continued on the regional limb perfusion, which is when we put a tourniquet above the, in this case, the fedlock area and we infuse high dosages of antibiotic into the foot. That surgery does exactly what this arrow shows. It goes in through the frog, opens up that deep digital flexor tendon, and makes a window that looks into the navicular bone. It's left open for drainage. The result, six weeks later after surgery, she was still five out of five lame. And now we show radiographic changes with severe navicular remodeling. So what's left? They pretty much are out of options at this point. They call multiple clinics around. No one really knew what to do. We call, we, they call us and to be honest, at this particular time, we have never treated a horse like this. We have never seen this problem before to such extent. And what we ended up doing was we call around the world and we still couldn't find anybody who has treated this. But we talked to Chelina, maybe some of you know Chelina Holberg, and she said, you know, there's nothing wrong with trying oxygen hyperbaric chamber. There's some rationale of why it might actually work. So we did it. And this is how we did it. This is a little bit of the story. This is how it went. This is the radiograph and the arrow is showing here the significant remodeling on the navicular area, particular navicular bone, in January 18, as you can see. This is what you call the, what we call the opacity or the mineralization of the area of the soft tissue. And this is the presentation of the horse. As you can see, she is non-weight bearing on the right front. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the video again so you can see how she is non-weight bearing on the right front. In the right side of this picture, I have a very, very scary microgram. If you look at the organism number two, this is the very first time that we see a bug that is actually resistant to every antibiotic that it was tested. So now in summary, we have a horse that is five out of five lame on the right front. She received bursoscopy. She received bursotomy, which is what we used to call the street nail procedure. She has been on multiple antibiotics, including systemic antibiotic, regional limb perfusion with vitro and vancomycin. And we see absolutely no change it doesn't present a, a real case for us, right? It doesn't present like we're going to have a significant success. But the owner wanted to try anyway. Interesting story. The owner was a helicopter driver. 
helicopter helicopter pilot and she had a very very drive a high drive and motivation to fix to fix willow right now we feel that we need no more diagnostic we know exactly what's wrong and the question is can we do something about it so we started at two times a day hyperbaric oxygen chamber at 2 ATA we continue everything else exactly the same the regional limb perfusion stayed the same with vancomycin every 48 hours the battery was the same and we also treated with colloidal silver because the owner has been wanting to treat with colloidal silver since the beginning she's a very um, strong advocate for it so we continue it so basically the horse was her own control we changed absolutely nothing the only thing we did was hyperbaric oxygen chamber in addition to the previous treatments that she was getting at the clinic. This is how she looked like four days post admission. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you how she looked four days post admission. And then we're going to take it a little further. This is how she looked two weeks post admission. Little bit of improvement, right? So we start feeling confident right now. We start feeling that we're making some progress. This is how she looks about 19 days post admission. Don't worry, I'm gonna present it again. I'm gonna show you more videos. But let me repeat this video again. At four days, then two weeks, then a couple steps at 19 days. So we're starting to feel encouraged on what's going on. We actually feel that we are getting somewhere. Now the question is, when do we stop it, right? Um, and that that was a very big deal for our for our clinical case because we've never done this before. So we did it until she was even better. So in conclusion, she has septic navicular bursitis. She had a septic navicular bone, and she had a deep data flexor tendon lesion. Of course, that was from the nail plus iatrogenic because the surgeon had to cut through the tendon to make a hole to get into the navicular bursa. The whole treatment consisted of hyperbaric oxygen chamber two times a day, then regional imperfusions of vancomycin every 48 hours. Hyperbaric oxygen chamber, um, sometimes we went up to three times a day. Uh, there is a minor typo in the presentation. Then Batril IV, Banamine, and Colloidal Silver. We gave her a poor to grave prognosis because of the presentation. She went through many surgeries already and, and the significant remodeling on the bone. This is a reminder of what the remodeling is to look like. Obviously on the, on the left side of the screen is the right leg and on the right side of the screen is the left leg. I'm gonna change that, I promise you. And this is, this is the outcome, this was the final outcome. I think we can agree that she looks significantly better on this video. She ended up getting embryos out of her and she was able to live many years after after her incident, which obviously got us some big brown points. Pretty good, right? Yeah, that's what we thought. We were very happy with it. We were very happy with this progress. Now Let's discuss this case a little bit. Why did we choose this approach? I think I, I made the case of why we chose the approach. Nothing else was working. Absolutely nothing else. The, this horse was treated by the book, academically, the way it has been described in the literature. And another thing that we tried to keep everything exactly the same, that way we made a case that the only thing that changed the outcome was the oxygen hyperbaric chamber treatment. That was the only thing. So she was basically her own control. Imaging wise, we didn't repeat the MRI. We, it, it would have been nice if we would have repeated the MRI, but we knew the horse was infected. We knew what was going on already. We feel like economically, 
made a lot more sense for the owner to invest on the treatment that was working that continue doing more treat more diagnostics so now a good case like this teaches a lot and one of the things that teaches is how to approach a case like this in the future which happens that later on after willow we receive a 12 year old warm blood mare who was used for hunters and she was intermittent lame on the right front lame over the past six months previous to presentation to us she was receiving therapeutic showing that didn't help at all then she received an intraarticular injection with corticosteroids and it did help for, for about a month which prompted the owners to do an MRI the MRI show a plethora of things. I don't want you to get caught up on this. But the important thing is that their veterinarian chose to inject her with corticosteroids, all right? And injected bilateral based on the MRI results. It happens that one month after the injection, the horse presented like this. This is a video of how she was walking one month after the injection. If you think about it, this looks relatively similar to Willow, right? Relatively similar. So now we know that we have probably an infection or an infectious process and we know that we have seen this in the past and we used the case of Willow to treat this case we presented to the owner and she was on board we performed regional limb perfusion we started with imipenem with the regional with systemic antibiotics the referring veterinarian chose to use uh, chloramphenicol with the systemic anti-inflammatories and we use hyperbaric oxygen chamber pretty similar process to what we did with Willow. The only thing that we switched was that we're not using here um, colloidal silver. So no colloidal silver. And instead of vancomycin, we did imipenem. And this is how, this is the outcome after 42 hyperbaric oxygen treatments. Now, you might say, oh, that horse is still lame. But bear in mind that this horse was significantly, based on the MRI, everything started because she was lame to begin with, right? So she actually returned to her baseline lameness. Does that make sense? So you can see that she's still, she's still lame, which is way better than what she presented, obviously. And she didn't go through a bursoscopy. She didn't go through a bursotomy or a street nail procedure. We returned her to how she was long time ago. Now, of course, the initial lameness needs to be worked needs to be worked up again. But this we consider this a, a highly successful case where we use the information we learned from Willow. And the epidemiology of how this process happens obviously usually it's an external object whether it's a shoe um that's why they that's why back in the days they called it a street nail procedure right because horses were riding in the street riding the street a nail went through the frog and went through an avicular bone created an infection a needle like the second horse from a and the infection in the navicular bird size is probably probably not as common as we expected because we, we're so close to that to the floor but any movement in the horse any break in the in the sterile procedure can actually bring that that infection which is pretty scary now literature summary what's out there in the literature we have two papers that that i am going to present to you in this presentation there are more papers but i think that these are these are the most significant and, and relatively controversial right because one of them was in 1986 where they say this disease is super difficult to fix prognosis is is probably going to be uh it's probably going to be bad then we have a recent paper by david Fuentes and, and his team 
and he says, well, you know what? 16 out of 19 horses did okay with his 3 nail procedure. Did very good, actually. And three horses out of, uh, out of these returned to a lower athletic performance, which was interesting. But I want you to, when you read these papers, I want you to pay really close attention to the, to the paper, how it was written, because sometimes it's important to read between the lines. In reality, 35 horses completely were presented to the case, to the to the center. It happens that 19 of them are the ones that went to surgery. The other ones were euthanized or didn't make it or something else happened. And in our case with with our with Willow, we're not necessarily looking for the, those 16 cases. We're looking for the ones, the rest of the, the other 50% who, who couldn't make it, right? So just food for thought when we're reading papers. Prognosis still guarded to poor. This is a tough disease, very tough disease with it. What was our rationale for this study, our rationale for this? Well, we know. What do we know? We know that the uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber will increase, release the stem cells from the bone marrow, actually about 100%. And in that release of stem cells, we wanted to promote the healing of the deep, deep the flexor tendon. We wanted to promote the healing of the navicular bursa and any other soft tissue that was going on. Another mode of action, we know that hyperbaric oxygen chamber potentiates, increases the potency of antibiotics, right? So this is proven, research proven. So we knew that we have a bacteria that was pretty scary. If you think about it, bacteria that is resistant to every single antibiotic tested, I think probably one of our one of our biggest fears as veterinarians. So Great help for that. And here are some papers that you can read a little bit more to, to learn about the, what I just talked about, the stem cell mobilization, the oxygen therapy, and, and how it's useful with, with osteonecrosis, and also how it potentiates antibiotics. Now, hopefully you enjoyed those cases. I thought those, those were pretty good. If you have any questions, please don't forget to, to ask us and get through Chelina, she will get them to me and I'll happily answer them. Now let me show you another case. I'm gonna show you in this case, I'm, I'm a big fan of following the a horse that gets treated versus a horse that doesn't get treated um, with, with hyperbaric oxygen chamber because there's just not much data out there. So we're trying to create some data. And check out these two cases. It's a Philly, I'm gonna present you on the left, a Philly one-year-old future racer. And on the right is a six-year-old Wambler gelding that was a short sports horse. Let's start with the Wambler gelding. Look at the progression of this dorsal cannon wound injury. Pretty cool, right? This is how it happened. The horse had an initial laceration in the paddock, probably at night when everybody was resting and sleeping, having a good day on a Sunday. The referring vet suture it, did a perfect job suturing it. And a couple of days later, this is this is what we got. The horse needed to go at 45 days from that moment, the horse needed to be in England competing. So we have 45 days to work on this horse. What do we know? We know that dorsal cannon, cannon bone wounds are a nightmare to heal. And and we know that there's so many, a lot of products out there that really promote promote the, the healing of dorsal cannon bone injuries, but they, they just don't have the, the data. So we tell this to them, hey, hyper equine hyperbaric oxygen chamber works really well on wounds. Even though it works, we know that it works really well when there is necrosis, when there is no good oxygen in the tissues. We, we know that. But... We know also that it helps with the granulation tissue, because it does. And we know that increased stem cell mobilization in the body. So we say, let's treat it. Let's treat this horse what we all we got. So we did equine oxygen. We did oxygen hyperbaric chamber. First we did uh, two times a day for a week. Then we went to one time a day. And these were the results. The horse left at 45 days post presentation with what you see in here. Pretty good, right? Now, very similar in the very, in the same day, not the same day, but the same, probably the same month, we get this one. 
this yearling who ran into a fence. This was my case. I was the, the primary vet for this horse. And I sutured it, went through a fence in Florida. And some fences in Florida, what happened in Florida is uh, a lot of the fences have this, their wooden fence, and then they have this paint. This paint is quite toxic to the tissues. So this yearling got stuck, I sutured it, and this is what it did. Several, I don't know, maybe well, a couple weeks later. It doesn't look good, right? But the most interesting thing that I want to tell you is that this owner wanted to do absolutely nothing. She wanted the farm manager to manage it with just bandage changes. And look at the progression over a year. This horse, and, and bear in mind, this is after me going, I, I'm not showing you the whole case because between, between these pictures, I actually went several times, shaved it down and tried to, tried to help. But this is a wound that I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure why this horse never didn't close for so long. It was changed with bandages, that's it, nothing else. So I thought that was very interesting that at the same time I was, ha I was having two cases, one with that was treated with oxygen, hyperbaric chamber, and the other one didn't. And my wound took a lot more than a year um, to heal. Look at this one, this one was also interesting. This is a thoroughbred yearling as well. And this horse decided to escape the paddock on a Sunday afternoon with three of his friends. And unfortunately, when he jumped the fence, got in front of a truck, the three of them. It was um, not a fun scene, but this horse was one of the ones that was the least affected, to put it that way. And you can see a significant, this is a, a road burn, that's what it is. And this is the progression of the oxygen chamber. It came right away after the suture dehesed. So the referring vet sutured it, it dehesed, it noticed that it needed oxygen chamber, sent it. And this is what it was 30 days later. Now in this particular case, we actually did laser as well because the owner, this was a very valuable horse and the owner wanted this fixed very quickly. And we have noticed that in some of these wounds, the laser is complementary to the chamber treatment. So it looks pretty good, right? We are very happy with the progress of this horse. So I hope you enjoyed these wounds. In summary, it's pretty, we use it quite extensively if they let us. It would be really good if we can measure the oxygen uh, concentration on the tissues as well, as like they do in humans, but unfortunately it's not very practical for us to do. So we gauge it based on the appearance and clinical science, etc. And because we know of the hyper, uh, hyperbaric oxygen chamber helping out with the stem cell production, then we know that we, do, we cause no harm by doing some extra ones. And it helps quite a bit actually. The, the, if, you, if you see the progression of these wounds, the more you do the chamber, it's pretty, pretty impressive. Now I'm going to show you this case. This is a three-year-old sort of like gelding that was supposed to be used for racing. And I, when I present you this case, I think that the radiograph are probably going to speak for themselves. And if you follow racing industry or if you follow high-level sports medicine, you probably have heard of these injuries quite a bit. And you probably know that these injuries are quite difficult to treat. So October 20, actually not 2028, sorry about that typo, October 2018, the horse presented five out of five lame acutely after galloping on the track. He was referred to a local clinic for a lameness evaluation. This is what the radiograph looked like. For those of us who have seen several of these, we know that, that this is a tough deal to work with. It's a tough deal because putting these bones together requires not just science, requires art, right? And the manipulation of the soft tissue around is significantly. The devascularization of this area is 
extreme. So the blood supply gets significantly, significantly affected on this type of injuries. And not just the blood supply for that area, but also the blood supply to the foot could potentially be affected, right? And very difficult injuries to treat. So the surgeon at Ocala Equine Hospital, Dr. Madison, he did a masterpiece. He really did a masterpiece. This surgery took several hours, very meticulous. This is not a, not a surgery that probably would have been attempted in, in any other circumstances. But this horse was very lucky that had great owners. They found a great surgeon, a great clinic, and they fixed this. I mean, they, they put it together probably use every single screw that they had at the, at the clinic and maybe they even went to Home Depot to get some more but they found them and they got it and they did a fantastic job now what to do after this we know for those of you who are old enough in the business we we have heard about this injury with a horse named Barbaro a very long time ago Barbaro was on the hind end this horse is in the front end and we know that a horse has more weight in the front end than the hind end. And we all know what was the outcome for Barbaro, right? The procedure itself went well, but got laminitis in the contralateral leg. So now here we have a, a problem and then a possible problem. The problem is that we have significant soft tissue uh, damage after the surgery manipulation, not to speak of the obvious bone tissue damage. Then we have the chance of contralateral laminitis in the other leg, right? Quite, quite an ordeal. Luckily for this horse, the owners were very, very good. And they care about the horse extensively. And they send them for the oxygen hyperbaric chamber. This is one of the a video of how he looked like after coming out. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it again on the on the screen for you guys. Right, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So he's he he had a good life. He ended up having a very good life with some good friends. He got a body. This is his pony body at the farm with his friend, and this is his this is his baby body. He actually made good friends at the farm and this is his two-year anniversary I'm sorry for the low quality video is about as good as I could get for the presentation but look, that was a two-year yeah. anniversary <laughs> not too bad right not too bad I'm gonna play that video again for you There you go. So that's a two-year yeah. anniversary and the horse continues to do well. We stay in very good communication with the trainer. Uh, the trainer of the horse actually, after the accident, rescued the horse, kept him at her farm and adopted him. Isn't that nice? And now she cares for him and he does fantastic. Every day he's spoiled. He has his bodies and he does pretty good. Have very happy life. Let me present you uh, one more case. Uh, this horse, her name, um, she's a thoroughbred mare, three-year-old racing, and she presented after running into a pole. And again, it was in Florida. The pole was a typical fence with the same wood painting that I'm talking about. And and the same oily painting. And this is what the wound looks like. This is the neck, by the way. Kind of a kind of the shoulder, the the, the between the between the neck and the shoulder. Alright. And this is how she presented. Very similar presentation in terms of lameness, right? She was left front, five out of five lame. Significant shortening of the cranial, cranial face of the stride, obviously, because of the muscles affected. We ended up repairing her, and I'm going to show you the initial presentation again. Five out of five lane, pretty much cannot bring that leg forward.
This is about the depth after we measured it was about 15 inches. But you could see that I can put my hand through the wound. I can palpate the carotid. I can palpate the main vessels. I can pretty much palpate all the internal anatomy on this wound. So the, she is five out of five lame. She cannot extend the cranial phase of the stride. So if you think about biomechanically, I'm starting to worry now about all those muscles that bring that leg forward or, or that have a component like the brachiocephalicus, the clitocephalicus, even the even the bicep could have a, a implication here and the uh, supraspinatus, a lot of these muscles that help bringing that leg forward. So now I'm starting to worry about what else could be going on. And I ultrasound a shoulder and this is what I found. So there is, there is a fracture in the scapula where the supraspinatus muscle goes. So that's the supraspinatus fossa. So that explains a lot about the lameness, right? If the supraspinatus cannot, cannot work. So in conclusion, she had a transverse fracture of the scapula. Luckily, it was incomplete. It was an incomplete fracture. How do we treat this horse? With the surgical repair, obviously, right? With the hyperbaric oxygen treatment. We did it twice a day, again. Uh, we did it for about uh, 14 days. Vibration plate. We did antibiotics. We did NSAID. And we put her in gastroprotectants. We gave her a fair prognosis for performance. Uh, we were a little optimistic. We didn't give her a poor prognosis, but we get a fair prognosis. This is how she looked after a month. Okay, come back. Now walk back. Not too bad, right? Now the scapula has those muscles, they, they love to heal. Show the fractures in the scapula, in the upper part of the scapula. In the fossas, they, they, sometimes they love to heal. And if you can prevent that infection, that could happen because of the contamination and that massive inflammation that we get because of that oil and paint, we are we're pretty much ahead of the game. And that's where the oxygen hyperbaric chamber goes so well. Not to speak also, there is a lot of nerve inflammation going on in the area right um because of the trauma and the pressure on the oxygen chamber will help decrease that inflammation and this is how she looks after six months i'm gonna play it again because that was quick this is how she looks after six months Good, so very, very, very helpful. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a treat. I'm sure maybe you have seen this before or have not. There is one last case that I want to present. This is an atypical case. This case had a disease that is abnormal amount of gas in the, in the wall of the intestine. Abnormal amount of gas in the wall of the intestine. This, gay, this girl lives in Animal Kingdom and they have battling with her for many years and the signs are colic. She gets colicky and she gets very, very painful. They have done multiple studies and it's in the CT scan they found a gas bubble in the lumen of the intestine. They decided that it was not a surgical case. The surgery would put her in significant risk and they were not able to do absolutely anything else. Chelina Hober put her in contact with us and we say, hey, why not try, right? Why not try the, the chamber? And they were on board with it. Now, if you have ever worked for an exotic animal you have to ask for a lot of permissions. And if you ever work on an endangered exotic animal like a gorilla, you really have to ask for a lot of permissions. And you have to get approval from many agencies that I had no idea they even existed to be able to move 
her from Animal Kingdom to the clinic. Not just that, obviously, horses are not very fond of gorillas. They, they see them as aliens. And you have to really clear up the whole clinic to make sure a horse doesn't see a gorilla coming in. The good news is that another thing that Disney did very well was they created a cage, a very secure cage, we took a lot of months and months to treat. So this gorilla was actually in pain for quite a while until the permits came in. The cage was made specifically for her and they were, everything could be organized. They actually did a documentary of her and this is what I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, a documentary on how on how we, she came in. So this is Lily. This is her face. That's the cage, the, the cage that they produce. And you would think, okay, how are we going to put all this inside the chamber? But we did. We were able to put the cage in the chamber, keep everything very wet, put mattresses all around. And she was mildly sedated. She was not under anesthesia. At the beginning, the, the deal was like, hey, are we going to put her under complete anesthesia or are we going to put her on sedation? Luckily enough, she was just mildly sedated and she did fantastic she, this is her in the cage this is her crew and she handled the hyperbaric oxygen chamber very very well it was a whole ordeal all animal kingdom came in like 25 people traveled with her this is how we put her in the chamber you see that cage going in it just makes you a little bit more concerned about the outcome we may be the first to try this. And the cage had to be made specific for the size of the chamber because our chamber the door is not chamber. wide enough for the cage mm -hmm. they already it's have. So this cage was made specifically for this particular day. So, so far we have used this cage twice. Thousands and thousands of dollars were spent on this cage to bring Lily in. The good news is that she actually did amazing after the first treatment and the the times between colleagues significantly decrease and then they came again these are the mattresses this is how we put the mattresses obviously we were very concerned if she would go nervous what is she gonna do how was she gonna be moving uh would she be tipping the cage over etc that's what we say we padded with surgical mattresses around and she did she did pretty good she handled amazing we closed the door and we did it. I'm, on, I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous when we did this chamber. I, I was very nervous. We kept going up, checking her. They wanted to put cameras inside the chamber to, to monitor. Obviously, we said no, no electronics around. And here's my nervous me looking at the pressure rising. And this is my brother William just checking on her at all times. So it was a quite, a quite an experience and a very, very highly success story we were very happy because we were able to actually help this gorilla quite a bit of course this video was the first time the second time she came it was she was a pro already it went quick it went much quicker we knew exactly what we were doing and everything went like a charm so this is about all i have for you guys i hope that you have enjoyed these cases in summary i I want to tell you that the hyperbaric oxygen chamber is extremely safe. By the way, and I totally, if you Google our, our name and oxygen chamber, you see a cool study that we did um, for the safety over 20, over 2,000 procedures and zero side effects. Very, very, very mild, if any, side effect that we saw. So very safe. Proper safety needs to be done, obviously. We have a check mark list that gets done every case every case another thing early intervention improve outcome i am not sure how are we going to spread the voice but if you can help me out with that that would be great if you can tell your friends about these cases if you can help me move along this uh, this product because it is just very effective and for some reason they don't teach it in vet school all the veterinarians have a little bit of reservations about it the public has reservations about the safety. They just are slightly misinformed. So I highly encourage you to talk to them about these cases because early intervention 
is way better. We don't have to wait until the last minute. As you can see, this where this a lot of these cases that I show you, actually all of the cases, were kind of kind of last minute effort uh, of the owners desperate. If we attack a lot of these cases early enough, we're gonna save a lot of money to our clients. We're gonna improve the patient care and we're gonna improve health and comfort of the cases. And sometimes we might even fix the horses rather than just treat them and give them palliative band-aid. We know that increases stem cell release from the bone marrow. That's a given. We have plenty of research to do that. We know that it potentiates antibiotic activity. So there, there's a lot of research that, that help us direct uh, the treatment with it. So if you can help me out, I would appreciate it deeply. Early intervention really, really will improve the outcome of our patients. If you have any questions at all, any questions, please follow Shalina. Um, she will send them to me. If you want to go to our page, www.epcrehab.com, feel free. www.epcrehab.com. Contact us, email us. We'll be happy to. We'll be happy to help. Thank you. Have a great day.